When we were uh, starting Zobni, we, from the beginning we wanted to build a freemium business and we had to go pitch investors on this idea and not all of them are hot on it. So we had to go and do some research into, hey, has this existed? And the truth is, is freemium actually has been around for a while. It's not a new thing. It's the easiest way for us to find this information was to actually go look at public companies. So here's a company, eFax. It's now listed as J2 Communications. And you can go and look at their 10Ks and 10Qs. Yes, I've done that. And it shows that they've ha they have about 10 million free users and 1.2 million premium users. And they're a profitable business. They're worth a billion dollars. Another one, Skype. They're worth about $2 billion. And right now, there's no user numbers, but you can get numbers on how many free minutes are being used and how many paid unit minutes are being used. And it's about, again, a 10 to 1 ratio between those two. And then finally, LogMeIn, a company I've become familiar with from working with Sean Ellis, is a company that went public this year. It's worth $450 million. They have about 300,000 premium users. And let's say about 10% of the registered users are active. Again, what they have is this magical 10 to 1 ratio. So this is what we've been striving at for in Zobni since we started, was to reach this 10 to 1 ratio where 10, for every 10 users we have on free products, we want one user on one of our premium products. Does anybody know what this is a picture of? It's not Central Park, it's our Golden Gate Park here. This is a 120 uh, year old freemium business model. Most people that go to this park don't spend any money. But if you want to go to the Japanese gardens, it's going to cost you money. That makes about $1.5 million per year. Um, we also have the conservatory, that makes about $800,000 per year. We've got the golf course, that makes about four or $500,000 a year. Across this product, there are premium upsells. 90% of the people that go there don't pay anything, 10% do. I actually looked at their, uh, their 2009 operating budget, and they're still a little bit in the hole. So us taxpayers are kind of funding them as, as their VCs, but hopefully someday they'll be profitable. So, as was said by Lincoln, free is really powerful, and that's because it's the most powerful word in marketing. Free is a marketing strategy, not a business model. And also, as uh, Lincoln said, it's powerful because of this penny gap. To get someone to do something for free is way easier than getting somebody to take out a credit card and give you a few cents. And because of that, that's a model that we've uh, implemented. So what I want to cover today in my talk are, are two points, or two ca categories. First. I want to answer the question of, is freemium right for my business? And then I want to go through um, some examples of how we've, some best practices and some lessons learned from us implementing our freemium model. So before we do that, we should frame this question, and that is, if you make software, you can make money in one of four ways. The first is just to simply sell your stuff. That's premium only. You can sell your stuff to some of your users. That's freemium. You can sell other companies' stuff. That's advertising. And finally, you can sell user stuff. And that's, I call it a data marketplace. That's kind of what Mint was doing behind the scenes. Now, the problem is, if you're going to sell to businesses, they don't want to have anything to do with these last two. So really, what you're stuck between is selling all your software or selling it to part of your user base. So is freemium right for my business? And let's narrow it down to, let's go, do we go premium only or do we go freemium? So one really uh, interesting insight Sean Ellis taught me was, what you're doing when you're building a, a freemium user base is you're essentially creating a community that is 100% targeted to people that like products like what you create. So if there's somebody else out there that has a huge community that you can advertise on and buy these, user cheap, buy these users cheaply, I'd probably go do that. But if it doesn't exist, you might have to create it. And that was what we had in our case. Now as a corollary, if somebody else out there is, is saturating that market of uh, that existing community with a really high priced product and they're able to outspend you in marketing, that's another place where you might need to come in with a free offering to create that community. Now, another great opportunity for creating a freemium business is if you have a premium only competitor. Again, referencing LogMeIn, they had GoToMyPC, WebEx, both these companies out there allowing people to share desktops and they were premium only. They were creating tons of demand. And so LogMeIn said, we can do this more cheaply, and we can give it away for free, and go after the freemium model. And almost all their mar marketing budget went towards SEM. Everybody was out there already searching for free WebEx, free go to my PC, and they just rode that wave. Now, if your product has network effects or needs network effects, these are great categories to build a freemium business. Like one example is Dropbox. Um, you want a lot of people using this because every time you send a file, someone else is getting a notification that you're using Dropbox. Or if your product needs network effects, it's going to really hurt your growth if both people have to pay to use it. And a great example of that is Skype. 
one thing you have to be careful of is to make sure that cost of offering the service uh, for free users isn't too high. This is why uh, no car companies have freemium models. And finally, and this is an important one as we kind of think of ourselves in the Silicon Valley here, is a lot of times it's going to take a lot of upfront investment to actually get this huge freemium base off the ground. And if you can't get a VC to give you money to do that, you might have to just start charging users from day one. So now what I want to do is go in and show you some specific examples of how we've made Zobni or made freemium a success at Zobni. And I have to put this caveat up here. It's a great quote from Paul Buhite, which says, advice is equal to limited experience plus overgeneralizations. So what I'm hoping is a couple things I say here are also said by other people, and then it won't be a limited experience. It will be the group's experience, and hopefully it will be good advice. So here's a screenshot of Zobni. If you guys aren't familiar with Zobni, we started as an Outlook plugin that helps you manage relationships and organize information inside email. The goal of the company is to be the Google of personal information. We want to be the center point of all your personal relationships. And from day one, we said we're not just going to be an Outlook plugin, but this is an incredibly valuable user base for us to go acquire, and we knew that they were in massive amount of pain. Since that time, oh, so, so I was going to go into why, why we went freemium. Um, one great thing about being on an email platform is that it's a communication platform. We're one click away from every person that you've ever talked to. So it's very easy for us to get our users to tell other users. Another problem that we had was there were no existing cheap paths to buy users. If there was a huge community out there of people talking about how do I find contact information for my, user, for, for my contacts and how do I search my inbox, we would have gone and bought advertising on that. But it didn't exist. So we had to go and create that community ourselves. We also are installed software. For the most part, we do have cloud pieces, but for the most part, it's running on your processor. We're, we're taking advantage of your machine, and it costs us nothing to have a user. So we have very low marginal cost. Another thing we did have is we did have access to v VC funds. We raised over $4 million before we even launched a product and had users. And we wouldn't have been able to do that if we wouldn't have had the money. And finally, a lot of the way that software is brought into enterprises and businesses is through enterprise sales. My co-founder was 22 when we started the company. I was 24, and we just were not interested in that. So since we launched Zobni for Outlook, we've, in the last six months, launched Zobni Plus, which is our advanced search product. It's, an, it's built off the existing Outlook plugin, and it gives people advanced search features like being able to search for links, be able to... Um, see an entire list of everyone that you've ever communicated with when you search inside Outlook's um, Compose window. And this thing's selling very well. Since that time, just recently, we launched Zobni for BlackBerry. This is our first, first departure from the Outlook platform. This is a one-time fee product that we sell for $9.99. It's also selling very well. And what comes with it, you can buy, is Zobni One, which is our cloud. We don't like to use the sync word. It's a cloud fuse. Uh, product where it takes information from both the BlackBerry and Outlook, puts it in the cloud, and makes, makes it accessible from anywhere. And th on the, th the third piece here, we have our enterprise product. Our enterprise product gives enterprises the three C's they care about, which are compliance, control, and customization. And it's a, it's a premium only service. It's built on top of our Outlook product and has additional controls for those IT. We started with this huge free Outlook product, and uh, that's what we worked on for the first three years of the company. We always knew we were going to go premium. But for the first three years of the company, it was all about getting this, this Outlook user base. What we did was then split off a piece of that, and we started charging for Zobni Plus. That's our product that's $29.95, one-time fee. And again, it's been selling very well to our existing user base and new people that come in. Since that time, we took a, that Zobni Enterprise, or Zobni Plus comes with Zobni Enterprise that has these additional features, and we charge $36 per user per year. And that was our first recurring revenue product. And it's mostly sold through inside salespeople. Zobni BlackBerry, totally off the Outlook platform, $9.99, one-time fee. There's absolutely no free alternative to this product. What you'll see is everything's piling up on the right-hand side of this, of, this, of, this, uh, of this graph. And that's because we're feeding off that existing free user base we built, and now we're just marketing our, existing, our new products to those users, and they're going to be premium only. Zobni One, again, is a premium only product. It costs $3.99 per month and syncs information between BlackBerry and Outlook and eventually new mobile and email platforms.